Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this video, we will continue on Chapter 4, Learning Objective 3, which is to prepare a table of equivalent units under the weighted average process costing system. So equivalent units, a key concept. So first, we're going to talk about equivalent, equivalent units. We remember what we're doing is, is trying to track the cost from the raw materials to the work in process to the various departments to finished goods. And costs are accumulated for a period of time of production in work in process. Products in work and process inventory at the beginning and end of the period are only partially complete. So when we talk about like petroleum, what we're saying is that if it's going from one department to the other department uh, and it's still in there at the end of the time period, the month or the year, the problem is that it's partially complete. And how do we account for that between going through the two departments? That's what we're trying to do with this equivalent unit calculation. Equivalent units is a concept expressing these partially completed products as a smaller unit of fully completed products. So once again, what we're trying to do is if we're, if we're going from such as the taffy example where we had a, a creation mixing department of the taffy and then a packaging department, the, qu the question is how do we allocate the costs between the two departments? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up with this equivalent unit concept. So if we have two half completed products, they're equivalent to one whole. So that's going to be the idea here. So we're going to come up with these equivalent units. We're going to come up with this equivalent units in terms of both the materials as well as the conversion costs, which have to do with the labor and the overhead. So for example, for the current period, Jones started 15,000 units of, started 15,000 units. So that's how many, that's how many units that we put in there, um, total, not equivalent units, uh, they're, they're, whether they're complete or not, we're talking about 15,000 units that, that will be completed basically at the end. Uh, and 10,000 units, and completed 10,000. So 10,000 have been completed, meaning they fully have the materials, overhead and uh, hours, labor hours in there and are done. Whereas 5,000 units of the units that are going to be done at the end of the process uh, are not yet done. And we have to come up with some kind of percentage. They're going to have to give it to us in the book. It's going to say 30% of that has been completed. So if, if that's the case, how many equivalent units of product did Jones have for the period? And the answer is going to be the 11.5 because the 10,000 are completed. There's no question about those. That's included. But this other 5,000 of units that will be completed is only 30% complete. Therefore, the 5,000 times the 30% gives us the 1,005 plus the 10,000 for the 11.5. So that's the concept. So the equivalent units are generally going to be smaller because when we talk about total units, we're talking about units that will be completed at the end of the process, when we talk about equivalent units, we're going to trim them back for the costs that have not been yet allocated to them. So Jones incurred 27.6 in production costs for the 11.5 equivalent units. Uh, so now we're going to say that there's 20, 27.6 total costs for the equivalent units. Therefore, we can then break it down to what is Jones's cost for uh, equivalent unit for the period. How do we do that? We take the 27.6, divide it by the number of equivalent units, and that gives us a cost per equivalent unit. The reason we're doing that is then we can take that, that equivalent unit cost and decide how much of it is still in this department versus how much has been left that department and moved to finished goods or the next department. So the calcul to calculate the direct materials and conversion cost equivalent units per period. So there's the formula that we just kind of looked at in that brief example. Materials cost per equivalent units. What we're going to take is the materials cost for the period. So at the end of like the month, we know how much the materials cost us for that month. The problem is to allocate that cost between the different processes. What we're going to do is calculate the equivalent units, in this case the materials equivalent units for the period, and divide that into the cost. That will give us the cost per equivalent unit, which we can then use to um, make the allocation between the two departments. In terms of conversion, and remember when we talk about conversion costs, we're going to take the conversion costs of the period. What are conversion costs? The direct material, the overhead, the things that aren't just the stuff, the, the material that we needed to convert the stuff, 
to the finished goods. That's the stuff that's not going to be complete as of the end of the time period because if it's still in process, then the conversion is the stuff that hasn't been done, the labor, the overhead. And we're going to take the conversion costs, which we know what they are. We know what the total costs are. We just don't know how to allocate them. And we're going to divide that by the conversion equivalent units for the period, which will give us our rate there that we can then use to create that allocation. So equivalent units production weighted average method. So the weighted average method makes no distinction between work done in the prior period and work done in the current period. And it blends together units and cost from the prior period and the current period. So basically, there's also a FIFO method, which would, to a lot of people is a lot more intuitive and it's probably more exact to use a FIFO method, but it's more costly because it takes a few more estimates and averages to do so. So therefore, in practice, most people are going to use this weighted average method, which will be simplified in that way. So that's what we'll look at, of course. Production report example. So we're going to look at MVP, sports equipment company, makes baseball gloves. So we're going to make baseball gloves. It's very exciting. Uh, it has two departments. It's got a cutting department and a stitching department. So MVP moves uses the weighted average process costing. Materials is added at the beginning of the cutting department, while conversions is occurred uniformly throughout the process. And using the following information for the month of March, let's prepare a production report for the cutting department. So we're in the cutting department. We make these gloves, so we're going to get the raw materials, which is going to be basically leather, I would think, or something, some kind of thing like that. And we are then going to have it go to the cutting department, where we'll cut the leather, and then it'll go to the stitching department, which we would stitch the leather together. And so we are working on the cutting department at this time. So here's a lot of data. Let me just try to break this down as best I can. So if we're in the cutting department, we have work in process at the beginning of the period. So in this case, that's March 1st. So you'll always know it's the beginning of the period because it's going to have a 1. So whatever month we're working on, <laughs> it's probably the first of the month. It's going to give us the number of units. We want to distinguish between units and dollars in this case. So we have 20,000 units coming into the cutting department. Those units are just going to be square tabs. You can just think of them as square tabs of leather. That's all there are. They're not done. They're not completed yet. They're just units. And we're not talking about equivalent units. We're talking about total units that will be done at the end. And then we have the materials. When Whenever we start a process, we usually consider the materials to be 100% complete as of the start of the process because that's the first thing that's going to happen. So as soon as we start making gloves, what's the first thing we do? We get 100% of the materials go into the department. Therefore, they're 100% done. The cost is going to be 50000 here in dollars. And then the conversion, remember what the conversion is, the stuff that makes the material go to the ending product, which is labor and overhead, is going to be 10% complete as of March 1st, as of the beginning. They have to give us this number. It's an estimate. Cost 7002 in dollars. Units started into production in March. So now we're talking about March. The month of March is what we're working on. 30,000 new units have started. Therefore, we're saying we're in the cutting department. 30,000 new sheets of leather that we're going to make into gloves or cut into like a glove shape in our department are being transferred in. Units completed and transferred out, 40,000. So a completed glove looks like an actual glove now going to the, to the stitching department or whatever, 40,000 units out. Then we're looking at work in process at the end of the time period. You'll always know whatever month the end of the time period is because it'll have a 30, 31, perhaps 28 in the case of March. And we have materials. Again, the materials are going to be considered to be 100% complete. If they're still in the department, in our cutting department at the end, they're probably missing like the pinky finger or something because we haven't quite finished that yet. But all the materials are in there. All the materials are in there. What's not there, we haven't finished cutting it. The labor's not quite done. The overhead's not quite done. Okay, and then we have the, the, the units being, we know the 10,000 units being, that's the total units, whether they're done or not, whether it's a square pad or whether the com fingers are completely cut off, out except for the uh, pinky finger. These are total units. And the equivalent units, meaning this is how much of a percentage done, in terms of materials and in terms of conversion, which will either be equivalent or less than the total units. Costs incurred during March, these are dollar amounts. Uh, we have materials, 90000 Th These are the amounts in dollars that we need to apply out between the cutting department and the things that were transferred out to 
in this case the stitching department I believe the ones that are going to sew up the glove that's what we're trying to do when we when we make this analysis conversion costs we have uh, direct labor in dollars 86,000 applied manufacturing overhead 1075 conversion costs are altogether 1935 giving us a total cost of the 90 plus the 1935 of 347 okay now that we've looked at all the data very thoroughly we are going to look at the production report analysis of physical flow so the first thing we're going to look at is how we would normally look at a physical flow of the production so if we were looking at a physical flow these are units these are not dollars in this case we have work in process as of March 1st. So once again, we got these square tabs that came in and we're producing them, right, of leather in our cutting department. And we started with 20,000 units that were half like done, like half the fingers are cut off. But we don't care because, you know, they're halfway completed. It doesn't matter because we're talking about total units now that will be completed at the end. And then units started during the month, 30,000. That's how many new squares of stuff that came in with no fingers cut out of them yet, they're just being started. That gives us 50,000 units to account for whether they're complete or not. We're gonna break that same calculation down, it's gonna add up to the same 50, but we wanna see it this way. We wanna see the units completed and transferred out, which is 40, plus the work in process at the end of the time period, which is 10. Adds up to the same 50, so we wanna double check that, but we wanna see it this way because when we see it this way, once we get our numbers, um, we can, for equivalent units, we can then allocate between the stuff that got transferred to the cutting department, which are these, and the stuff that's still in, I mean, st to the stitching department, and the stuff that's still in our department, the cutting department. That's our goal. We want so now we will take a look at the production report example, calculation of equivalent units. So this looks a bit confusing. Let's see if we can break this down. Once again, we have the same type of calculation over here. We've got the work in process as of March 1st. The units started and completed the total units to account for 50,000. Then we have the units completed and transferred 40,000 work in process is going to be the 10 as of the end of the period, work in process at the end of the period gives us uh, the total units to account for 50. Once again, same calculation here. We're going to break it out in this method down here so that we can break it out between the work in process that is still in process as of the end of the period versus the stuff that got transferred out. We have on this axis, we have the physical units. That's what we're looking at. The conversion percent percentage complete. Notice we're only worried about the conversion because the materials uh, we'll discuss is, is basically going to be kind of given to us because we're using the average method and because we assume that the materials all came in at the beginning of the time period. Then we have the equivalent units here. Remember, the equivalent units is going to be in terms of both the direct materials and the conversion. So we're going to do a calculation of equivalent units. This same numbers over here will be equivalent units in terms of those two different costs so that we can allocate the dollar amount between those two. What we're saying up here is that we're not going to worry about basically the stuff in the beginning process because of the average system. If we were using first in, first out, we would uh, calculate the, the beginning materials here in terms of conversion and uh, direct materials because of the average method. That's what makes it more simplified. So this 10,000, this 10% up here, we're not going to use in terms of direct uh, material and conversion equivalent units. What we're worried about is down here on the bottom half, once again, looking at the cutoff between the stuff that's still in this, this department and the stuff that's moving to the next department. So we have, first we have units completed and transferred, and these are going to be 100% for both conversion and direct materials, because basically we're assuming that they were both started and completed during the time period. Therefore, 100% of, of the direct materials were in there at this time. So 100% of the cost should be in there and 100% of uh, the conversion should be there if we're assuming that they're started and completed. Work in process as of March 31st, uh, the stuff that's in there at the end, remember this is the stuff that has like, you know, three of the fingers cut out of our glove, but it's not done. It hasn't moved on to the stitching department. We have 10,000 units to account for and the book's going to have to give us some kind of percentage. The percentage they gave us was 50%. So we're saying they're 50% completed. Therefore, we're going to take the 10, in terms of equivalent units, 
if we started it, we know that all the material's in there because we're cutting it. There's going to be excess material. The material's in there. So equivalent units for materials is the same number, 10,000, 100%, same number. What we're worried about is the conversion, the, the time it takes to, and that's going to be the direct labor and the overhead. So that's where the 50% lies. The 10,000 times the 50% means for equivalent units, we only have 5,000 when we're talking about the conversion. Therefore, when we're talking about this 50,000, we have the same 50,000 for direct materials. But in terms of the conversion cost, we only have the 45,000. We are then going to use these in order to allocate between uh, this department and the next department. And we'll do that next time. Thanks.